Hello again. Welcome to another session of Surgical Pathology Digital Slide Review. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel. Our program, as always, uh, made possible by the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, uh, a large library of digital slides uh, made po uh, possible as a joint venture with the Digital Pathology Association and PATH Presenter. Our case today comes again from the files of the uh, University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, the Stevenson Cancer Center, our NIH designated cancer center. Uh, the patient is a 68-year-old woman who has noted some increasing vulvar irritation and a burning sensation. She comes to a gynecologist who notes a somewhat symmetric, um, pale, uh, very thin and slightly friable uh, uh, squamous epithelium uh, involving uh, both sides of the uh, vulva, uh, both uh, labia minora and majora. Uh, she does a uh, punch biopsy and sends that sample to us uh, for evaluation. Here is a representative uh, slide of that, and we can see here the skin surface um, outlined along the surface with an area of hyperkeratosis uh, here to the right. Uh, we also note that there's a scattering of blue cells along the uh, superficial dermis, and then deep to that, the dermis submucosa looks uh, fairly unremarkable. We're dealing here with the uh, labia majora or more peripheral because we can see that we have adnexal structures with hair, erector pillar, pili muscle, and uh, uh, sweat glands. If we go down to a higher magnification, particularly over here towards uh, this one margin, we'll get a sense for uh, the inflammatory component here and see that uh, the epidermis looks uh, relatively uh, bland. The keratin is very compact. Uh, it's not the usual orthokeratotic uh, basket weave type of uh, stratum corneum. The granular layer is fairly sparse, uh, but not prominent. Uh, and then we have this uh, sub-epithelial zone of uh, uh, inflammatory cells. We can see uh, more and more of these cells are uh, plasma cells, as you can see here, a couple of nice plasma cells uh, there in the mix. Um, there's a little bit of uh, perivascular inflammation, and many of these are plasma cells uh, along the uh, uh, superficial vascular plexus and in the interstitium. Uh, going more uh, to the other end of the biopsy here, we see more of this process. And notice here that we have this zone uh, here between the epidermis um, on the top and here, there, the uh, uh, deeper portions. And this zone is uh, relatively sparse in terms of vasculature, and it's also very homogenized. Uh, looking here a little bit further, we see some vacuolization or vacuolar change along the dermal epidermal junction, uh, which highlights uh, uh, some of the process that may be going on there, but it's not widespread or pronounced. Here again, we see these ectatic, uh, uh, very sparse uh, superficial ves ves vessels, um, and then deep to that, this underlying uh, vague zone of uh, plasma cells, uh, some histiocytes, and uh, lymphocytes. Uh, moving along further, we see that uh, here we have some pigment, uh, melanocytic pigment that has probably uh, drifted down below the uh, uh, ep epidermis uh, into the superficial uh, submucosa or dermis. And then here where it's a little bit more hyperkeratotic, we can see that the uh, epidermis becomes a little bit hypertrophic. Now there are a few rare reedy ridges, but notice how these are sort of bulbar uh, shaped. Uh, here we have a little bit of a sweat gland duct uh, with some associated uh, hypergranulosis there. Well, these findings are characteristic of lichen sclerosis at atrophicus. Um, and it's oftentimes a diagnosis that one can recognize almost immediately from low power, uh, especially if we have this pale pink zone 
um, along uh, the sub uh, epidermal uh, region uh, with sparse or no inflammation. Now, sometimes the inflammation can uh, hug the dermal epidermal junction, um, and that's usually an earlier stage. Well, what is lichen sclerosis at atrophicus? It's a very common but non dysplastic lesion of the vulva and occasionally else, elsewhere that occurs over a broad age range. Uh, from childhood all the way to late adulthood. Now, in early childhood or uh, young adulthood, premenopausal uh, patients, uh, it can commonly have other uh, areas of involvement, although if it presents uh, in the uh, later adult stages and postmenopausally, it usually does not involve other areas. It appears to be a lymphocyte-mediated autoimmune disorder. Uh, many of these patients have autoantibodies and may have autoimmune disease in other locations. Now, there's also growing evidence, and this is one of the clinically significant thing, is that it may be a precursor to vulvar squamous cancer. Uh, and so its detection is important because uh, these patients may warrant more close monitoring or further evaluation. Uh, it's also important to recognize that you can see this in conjunction with vulvar squamous carcinomas as well. Well, let me show you some additional examples so that you can become adept at this diagnosis. Here's uh, another uh, shave biopsy. And here in this case, we see uh, three samples. We see hyperkeratosis. And then we see very superficially here, we see this bland pink zone with just a hint here um, of some of the deeper uh, inflammatory changes here in the center of portions of it. And then in this third level, we can see that there's this band across here that just delineates this uh, homogenized zone. So we'll look and see again. Uh, these are uh, going to be lymphocytes and uh, some plasma cells. I think we can even make them out here as being likely plasma cells uh, in this zone. And here we see this uh, more homogenized area. Again, noting here in the epidermis, very minimal uh, granular zone, very minimal uh, degree of reedy uh, papillae uh, developed in this situation. All of those very characteristic. Some follicular plugging can occur where you'll have more prominent granular layer, uh, usually again associated with adnexal structures. Let's see another example. Um, Here's another example. Turn this just slightly here so we can uh, see it well. Again, we can see surface, not much care hyperkeratosis here, but we see this broad zone here of um, expanded uh, subepidermal collagenous change, uh, deep to which is this very uh, dense uh, lichenoid or band like. A zone of inflammatory cells. And as you can see over here, it's not <clears throat> too uh, far from the skin surface. Um, but then as we come along here, there's more of an expanded zone. Uh, here again, we'll see the inflammatory infiltrate, a mixture of lymphocytes and some plasma cells uh, in here, not as well identified as on our earlier uh, examples. Let's take a look at another case. <clears throat> you should be good at this at this point. Uh, you've seen three. Here's the fourth. Again, we see slight hyperkeratosis along the surface, uh, fairly smooth and straight, almost atrophic uh, epidermis with no reedy papillae, um, and then a band of uh, very homogeneous pink uh, tissue. Now, notice here that there's really no inflammation left. And so as this disease progresses, as this superficial uh, subepidermal zone becomes homogenized, eventually sometimes the inflammation can dissipate, uh, essentially burn out, if you will, um, and you're left with just the homogenized zone there with very little uh, residual inflammation. Um, so again, that's an, a part of the life cycle that you can see with this disorder um, as it progresses. Well, 
how do we, what are we concerned about? What are the other considerations here? Well, one of the things that we might be concerned about is another skin disorder that is not specific to the vulva, not even most common in the vulva, but can occur there, and that's lichen planus. Um, it has the similar name, lichen, uh, but it's uh, flat, planus. Another consideration is a differentiated vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia, or simplex VIN. So how do we differentiate these two? Well, with lichen planus, this usually has uh, areas of hypergranulosis that often form sort of wedge shapes uh, in the uh, epidermis. Uh, there may be cytoid bodies in the squamous epithelium, and bas the basal area will look more squamatized. And we will retain reedy ridges, and they will be somewhat pointed. We don't see any of those in uh, lichen sclerosis. With differentiated VIN, it's a little bit more tip uh, difficult. There will be some basal or squamous atypia, and maybe some squamous hyperplasia. Um, and if we were to do a P53 stain, we would tend to see continuous reactivity of those basal cells to P53, whereas in lichen sclerosis, it would be interrupted. There might be some positive cells, but they would be discontinuous. Additionally, with differentiated VIN, we usually do not see dermal homogenization unless, unless the LS has been the precursor of this differentiated VIN. And since this entity is a non-HPV-related uh, disease, uh, LS may be one of the precursors for differentiated VIN. Finally, we would not usually see the lymphoid inflammation that we see with lichen sclerosis in many cases, although as our last case just illustrated, that can also sometimes be missing. Well, let's take a look at some examples uh, of these mimics. Here's a, a small skin biopsy, a few adnexal structures. And here right off, we can see this band of uh, inflammatory cells hugging the dermal epidermal junction and partially obscuring it. Now, we also note that their granular layer seems to be somewhat prominent here. There is maybe a little bit of hyperkeratosis, but notice here, as we get a little bit higher, notice how this granular layer becomes somewhat wedge-shaped. There's one, here's another one here. And that's because these reedy, pap reedy papillae are prominent, thin out areas, and uh, you get this uh, intervening wedge-shaped areas of hypergranulosis. Now, the other thing to note here uh, is these pointed reedy. See how they express a point. They also are sort of wedge-shaped heading upwards. Now, this is not the perfect example, but it's uh, sufficient to let you know that that's uh, a feature you should look for. So look for the wedges of hypergranulosis coming down. Look for the pointed reedy wedges pointing up, and you'll be thinking of lichen planus rather than lichen sclerosis. Uh, another sort of wedge-shaped or pointy shape is how these uh, uh, epidermal uh, uh, projections into the dermis can also be uh, somewhat pointy shaped as well. Here again, we'll see um, at higher magnification, you'll tend to see some intraepithelial lymphocytes, so you can see that with lichen sclerosis. You'll see more basal vacuolar degeneration. Um, and we mentioned the cytoid bodies. I think that's what these uh, pink bodies are here, uh, sort of representing uh, some dying keratinocytes. Uh, in the epidermis. Uh, here's a few more uh, of these sorts of entities here. So that's a nice example of lichen planus, and you shouldn't uh, be mistaking that for lichen sclerosis in your next vulvar biopsies. Now, what about uh, differentiated uh, VIN? Well, since this is a precursor lesion uh, for squamous carcinomas, uh, it can be difficult uh, but here's a nice example to show you uh, that in this case, uh, we do have a band of lymphocytes along the uh, epidermal and uh, subjacent border. Uh, we do have hyperkeratosis. 
uh, we do have a very minimal or lost granular layer. Uh, but what we also have here, we don't have the dermal homogenization evident anywhere, but we also have a greater degree here of basilar squamous atypia. And I think you can see that these basal keratinocytes are quite atypical. They're not the sort of thing that jump out at you as in a usual VIN, uh, but they do show increased mitotic activity. And were we to do the P53 stain, we would expect to see these continuously lighting up with uh, uh, intense P53 nuclear uh, labeling. Uh, in differentiated VIN, we may also see uh, labeling of the suprabasilar epithelial cells, epidermal cells, uh, with uh, P53. Now, in some circumstances, this can evolve into a Verrucas-type carcinoma, uh, where you may actually get uh, areas that look like they are becoming invasive. Um, and this is a little bit more verrucoid in this uh, location here. Well, I hope that's been helpful. Um, here's another example just to compare back to our original uh, uh, disease, uh, lichen, lichen sclerosis. We can see here, again, deep band of lymphocytic inflammation, a homogenized zone, very thin uh, epidermis with perhaps some hypertrophic keratinization. There's a little granular layer here, but it's not wedge-shaped, and we see no reedy uh, papillae here, or very, very few. Uh, so that's a nice example to summarize uh, lichen sclerosis. So our final sign out today on this patient is lichen sclerosis at atrophicus involving the vulva. Um, and we hope that uh, that will help you in differentiating your future uh, cases. If you like this video, please subscribe so you won't miss future ones um, and share your comments below. We really do appreciate your comments, suggestions, things you, topics you'd like to see covered, uh, challenges that you face uh, with these entities uh, in your practice. Uh, feel free to reach out to me directly or with comments. And until next time, uh, thanks for joining us.